Can an iPad replace a Cintiq? Did it replace my Cintiq? What about Sidecar? Can the iPad be a drawing tablet for the Mac? Ready to get started, baby? Quick aside, this is more about using the iPad as a drawing tablet display like you would use the Wacom to display Mac OS apps, as opposed to comparing iPad OS to Mac OS and when it's better to do what on where, because you may have your Mac OS workflow, but could benefit from some iPad mobility. Or maybe you're like, I don't want to buy a dedicated Wacom, can't I just buy an iPad and do as many things as possible with it? Well, can you? Okay, sport, good talk. iPad vs. Wacom. Before this all degenerates into rambling nonsense, let's do a totally incomplete head-to-head -head spec comparison. iPad Air 2020 has a 10.9 inch screen. That's diagonal because that's how you measure screens. With 1640 by 2360 pixels, that's roughly 9 by 6 and 1 quarter inches or 2316. Yep, iPads aren't 4.3 anymore. Well, the base level one still is. For now. But the Air and the Pro are a little wider, closer to 7.5, which is a size that was popular with photographic prints back when people used to do that thing. The Cintiq 16, hey, it's 16 inches. With 1080 by 1920 pixels, that comes to 13 by 8 inches, or 16.9, traditional widescreen. So the iPad has a brighter 500 nit, higher resolution screen, and the Cintiq has a bigger screen, but with a less bright 210 nits. But, but, it lets me do all that regular computer stuff I like to do. What's a computer? We'll get to using Sidecar to make the iPad a Mac OS drawing tablet, but first let's talk about the Apple Pencil on iPad OS. This is an Apple Pencil 2, only compatible with the iPad Air and Pro. Why isn't it compatible with the base level $330 iPad? Because this one has whatever it's called when a magnet connects to a thing and it charges wirelessly. The cheapest iPad doesn't have wireless charging and can't charge the Gen 2 pencil, so the Gen 1 has a lightning port for charging and pairing, and it seems like it needs to be repaired after research, so yeah, even if you have a way to charge the Gen 2 pencil, there's no way to pair it. It's June 2021 right now, in the spirit of Nostradamus, I'm gonna make a guess that a new base model iPad will be released sometime between November 2021 and March 2022, and it will be compatible with the Apple Pencil 2. To everyone speculating on an Apple Pencil 3? No, no. Too soon, too soon. Apple Pencil 2 versus Wacom Stylus. They're both good, they're different, but I don't have any preference of one over the other. The Apple Pencil is heavier, but also smaller, also known as denser. By the way, it's denser because it has a battery and Wacom pens magically have no battery, which is impressive, but you get 12 hours on an Apple Pencil and one minute of charging gets you like an hour of use. It has no buttons, but it does have a double tapping. You can switch between current tool and eraser. Switch between current tool and last tool used, which yes, you have to go all the way to settings Apple Pencil to change this and show color palette. The Wacom has these buttons, but I only use it for display toggling so I can switch from this screen to that screen or the iPad screen. But we'll get to that. I don't use the eraser because in Photoshop, holding tilde on the keyboard turns your brush into an eraser. So instead of erasing like this and then redrawing your edges, you can have an eraser that is whatever brush you're using so the blend is the same. I don't know. Does this make sense to you? So rather than flipping it over and using an eraser, which is going to be the default, whatever brush the eraser is set to, when you do uh, clear, tilde is clear, and it basically inverts your brush into eraser, so that way you can get the natural edge of what your actual brush is, so when you erase it, you can slim your line, and it's not like you're making a hard cut, and then you need to redraw that edge. <laughs> if that wasn't clear. And yeah, there's a bunch of other programs out there which all have keyboard shortcuts that work just as quickly as flipping the pen over because my left hand is always right here on the left side of me, rightly. 
I mean, ready to do something? Having a keyboard is way more important to me than having buttons on my pencil, which you can have with iPad OS, and it doesn't have to be this wonderful but expensive Magic Keyboard. It can be any Bluetooth keyboard. This has more to do with the screen than the pencil, but there is a little more distance between the plastic cover of the actual Wacom screen than on the iPad, which creates more separation between your nib and what gets drawn. Really only noticeable if you're looking at it from the side. I'll assume the iPad has some kind of laminate glass screen or whatever, so it feels a little more ritzy and yeah the Wacom is plastic <laughs> all right sidecar we're at sidecar Sidecar is basically an extension of AirPlay, so it lets you turn your iPad into a wireless external monitor, and there are on-screen menus that give you functionality like the MacBook Pro's touch bar. Does it even still exist? Hey, as it turns out, this is called Touch Bar. That makes sense, and it's also just as not supported by third-party apps. So most of the time, it's just a black bar taking up space. And then there's Sidebar. It's a bar, it's on the side, and it sounds like Sidecar. Branding. I turned them all off because I want as much screen as possible because it's basically stuff you can do with keyboard shortcuts, which, pleasant surprise, the iPad's Magic Keyboard switches over to controlling Mac OS input along with your existing keyboard. But the trackpad does not. It kind of gets repressed into acting like you're touching the screen, but it's not very elegant and the disc thing disappears around a lot and all you could really do with it is swipe down from the top and see control center and get out of sidecar. I mean, it would be nice if it just worked like an extra trackpad, but I know there would be a conceptual inconsistency because touching the iPad screen reveals that sidecar acts basically like a virtual machine. So you could swipe your way out of it and do iPad stuff and then come back in. Also, if you want to have the best iPad drawing experience, there are stands for turning an iPad into a draft table like the Wacom 16. Cintiq 16 into a draft table like the Cintiq 16 and then there's also this magnetic arm like the Wacom flex arm that would work better for my setup because I already have this Cintiq here and I'd really prefer having an extra monitor over here or up here so it's kind of straight with my screen but whatever <laughs> before I got the Cintiq 16 I was considering getting a not yet announced iPad and Apple pencil and thought maybe the fairly recent Mac OS sidecar feature would be the bridge that would grant me a new drawing tablet and an iPad well as it turns out the iPad that was announced was the fourth generation iPad Pro the one with the lidar cool but not something I needed for what I do March 2020 was all about iPad Pros it was also about the coronavirus too, and I didn't want either. Flash forward, the iPad Air 2020 that was released in November was the iPad I was hoping for that spring, so I got it. End of story. Okay, now let's get to the point. Can you use Sidecar to turn your iPad into a drawing tablet for the Mac? Yes. Yes, you can. Is there a compromise? Yeah, it's not the best of all worlds, but it works for me. And if I didn't have the Wacom, I would be like, this is how I make draw on computer and think nothing of it. Maybe you're afraid, like, are you a computer person? No, I'm not. I'm, I don't like the, that would be like changing my sex or my political affiliation. I'm not, that's a whole new, I'm not that person. Well, I read some forums before finally updating to Catalina and people were saying there was too much lag to use the iPad with Sidecar as a Mac OS drawing tablet and I don't know what the deal was but it felt laggy to me when I first tried it and I wrote it off for a while. Maybe there were updates in the in between that made things more not laggy. I tried a bunch of things to recreate a laggy experience and it feels within the parameters of fine to me, or maybe it was all psychosomatic, and that's what I get for listening to a bunch of forum jockeys. Your mileage may vary based on a lot of factors. I have a 2017 iMac mid-spec. I animate in Photoshop mostly. Go Team Raster. There's an app called TV Paint that's probably better, but whatever. Photoshop's animation tools are notoriously buggy and incomplete at best, so I just work around that. So I'm used to compromise. That's the point I'm trying to make. <laughs> Yeah. 
So I've made do with a lot of suboptimal things in my life. If the iPad Air had come out sooner, I probably would have bought it. Cintiq 16 is $650 versus the iPad Air at $600 for 64 gigabytes and $850 for 256 gigabytes. We'll ignore the popcorn pricing here and go with a 64 gigabyte model because Wacom has no storage and neither contender needs it in this fantasy drawing tablet league because we are running whatever on this thing. Apple Pencil Gen 2 is $130. Combined, you have a $730 iPad drawing setup. Yes, you could save even more money with a base level iPad and an Apple Pencil Gen 1 at $430, but I don't have either of those things to test, so... With the Cintiq, you save $80 compared to the iPad and you get a bigger screen, except with the iPad, that $80 gets you a higher resolution P3 approximate color gamut and brighter screen. Oh yeah, and a computer that's not as good as a laptop, as in there are some things you can't do, and some things that are harder to do, but you can do things like use it as an extra camera. I was going to use the iPad to record this entire video to prove how good its rear-facing camera is, but it doesn't fit in the teleprompter. And it's also the thing I read off of when I use the teleprompter. Which is why I keep looking to the right for this shot, because I don't feel like learning this script, so I'm reading off the computer screen. If you're trying to save money, you're accepting compromises, usually. I mean, the bigger 13-inch iPad Pro is $1,100 for 128 gigabytes of storage, so there's less compromise for almost twice the price. And Wacom does it too. The Cintiq Pro 16 is $1,500 for a better screen, but at the same size. The Cintiq 22 is $1,200 for a larger version of the Cintiq 16's 210 nit almost sRGB screen. And it's not just about the screen, there are other features. The point is, the pricing of Apple products and Wacom products follow a similar popcorn pattern. Compromise feels like a deal, but when you go for the best, and there's a Cintiq Pro 32 for $3,300, then it doesn't feel like a deal anymore, and it's still just the display. Because Wacom also sells all on one computers too, <laughs> by the way. So the point I might be making is that if you put cost at the lead of your decision making, like how much bang can I get for the buck, you will inevitably end up compromising. And wanting the best gear will be a journey to diminishing returns. If all I had was an iPad, I would be used to using it as my only drawing tablet. And in a Wacom first iPad sidecar throwdown, it's the smaller size of the screen that's the biggest strike against the iPad. And second would be the Wacom's instant availability. It does one thing and it's just always here and ready, but you can easily take an iPad anywhere, so that's good for some people. And even if the iPad is more laggy on some setups, there's an app called AstroPad that lets you mirror Mac apps onto the iPad over USB that might not have as much lag because it can do a wired connection and Sidecar is wireless. Not sure if this app, which I've never used, lets you use the iPad as a second non-mirrored independent display, so research that if it's important to you. Hey, look, it says it has less latency than AirPlay. Haven't tested, just saying it exists. <laughs> Just to go back to that whole display toggle thing using Wacom Stylus on the iPad, in all reality, like, what's the point? You've got this set up and you're like, I want to draw on the Wacom and look at the iPad. Okay, you can do that. Tap display toggle until your input shows up on the iPad. It feels weird, like it's consistently slow. It works and you might not notice it, but when you're A-B comparing it, it definitely feels off. Oh yeah, and one last pointless product combo, using the Apple Pencil on iPad and looking at it on the iMac screen. Go up to the AirPlay menu and select Mirror Built-in Retina Display, and it works. It feels responsive. Keep in mind the iPad display is 1640 by 2360 and the iMac 27 inch is 2880 by 5120 or 5K. So everything looks really scaled up because the iMac screen is limited by the resolution of the iPad. So this doesn't do anything to fix that whole I wish the screen was bigger issue. Is there a setting for UI scaling somewhere? I don't know. I'm tired. I don't care anymore. Goodbye. Ready to stop this baby?